Today we have an epic East meets West a swing makeover on the East side and Steve Imbley on the West side of the Steve Imbley Academy. You know, we've been friends since we played in Seattle uh, against each other, not, not against each other, but in different age groups and back when I was 50. Now I'm going to be 70 this year. You guys are going to be 75 next year. And you know, it's great. You've been out here for a couple of days and we had, had a good chance to work on some stuff. Yeah, it's been great to uh, come out here and get a chance and opportunity to swing with you and work on a few things and enjoy the weather. Now, we're on opposite ends of the spectrum. I'm coming back from my third replacement in three years. I've got some back problems, some other health problems, but I'm hoping after not playing nationally for five years to get back to play 70s next year. Just had my left knee done two months ago, so I'm struggling to find the swing. You're in a different boat. You've had a hit for a pretty good average this year. Talk about your year so far. Well, basically, I, I've hit for a very good average, I think, and, and I've had a little bit of power. I've, I've not had that home run power especially the home run power I had at the end of my career, uh, earlier part of my career. But at, right now I'm trying to regain a little bit of that power and get a little bit of home run power back. Now this weekend here, I think the biggest thing we found out was that uh, uh, we preach it to uh, the athletes at the Steve Emily Academy, Brett Knight, Swing Makeover. We see guys roll over. I think the rolling over, not, not a period defined X now, but a rolling into the impact. We both kind of talked about is that being the biggest flaw we see on the campers we work with. Absolutely. I, I would venture to say 65-70% of my campers uh, basically have trouble with rolling over in some form. The problem with rolling over is that as soon as you as soon as soon you lose this ability to rotate, pull an axe snap into the ball like you hit an axe into a tree, as soon as you roll over it disconnects your rotation your rotation stops. Absolutely. I think it's, uh, it's very, very important to really focus on you know, the pull, rotational, axe snap is very important to do. So, yep, so we have the rotational pull, axe snap, and that implies, again, the sequence, rotation of the body, a pull in your connected lead arm, getting that extension and snap all within the rotation. But the axe snap, this wrist sideways, like hitting the hammer sideways, that gives you defined lag to snap. If you roll, if it turns it down at all, you're getting into the rollover, and that's the thing, Steve, you and I are doing the drills in the cage, the swing simulator, the hammer, everything else. It's really hard, even on our, ourselves, to make sure we're doing all three in sequence and all three it's, properly. It's very, very easy just to turn just a little bit, and I was really surprised at that when I started looking at it, because I thought I had a pretty good pretty good level axe snap, but I started realizing that I'm pulling over a little bit, too. It all comes down, I think, to this here, boom. If you can... If you turn it sideways, the wrist only turns 90 degrees sideways, but that brings it from lag back to impact. So here's a drill sequence you can use, Steve's rotation, extension, and snap, making sure the wrist and the knuckles don't line over. If you look at a hammer sideways, it'd be like your, your left wrist acts like a hammer sideways. It doesn't want to roll over, it flexes sideways. Then we're using the swing simulator lead arm. You can see the knuckles should be aiming the same way the bat head would be, or the X head would. Here I roll over. See, I roll over just enough, and you can see how that would not be a good swing of the axe into a tree. But when Steve demonstrates it properly here, the axe or bat head buries in the trees, the knuckles are aiming the same direction. If there's no rollover, you'll get that hinge sideways of the lead wrist, and you'll bring everything to the point of impact right there. Everything's coming 100% into the point of impact. Now, when you put the axe on, you can see roll down, you're going to bounce that axe off into your foot. You're going to roll up over the top of the ball, but that's done correctly. You can see the knuckles are in a good position. Even here, Steve's just getting into the rollover a tiny bit, which you, which you will. Though you'll flow from the X snap into the rollover. But to do these drills over and over and over, fantastic. And make sure you look each time and make sure you're not rolled over. You're driving to the point of contact, just like you had an X blade on the end. That's separating the snap from the roll. Great. In the past, a lot of people, one of the pieces of advice that everybody would give you is to swing all the way through the ball as hard as you can. I have not found that to be true. What about you? Well, it doesn't give you that defined point of impact. I mean, the nice thing about, about the sequence of rotation, extension, and X snap is that we brought 100% of, of, of the, of the uh, power into the ball. You know, And if you're just swinging through it, point A to point B, all the way back to our steals video, Dave Neal Jr. said it's point A to point B, and I've heard a lot of pros say that, and you just trust you hit it at the halfway point, well, it works good for some people, but it never gave me a defined point of impact. You? Exactly. Uh, the tendency was to swing, try to swing through it, and then I would lose power, and I think that was something that happened because I wasn't getting the good snap into it. So if you hit into the ball with 100% of what you got, you bring all your focus to the point of contact, you don't have to worry about the follow-through, it should just happen, right? It should just happen naturally. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, the one drill, and again, going back to point A to point B, you know, we worked a lot in the cage. We've worked with our campers a lot. And, and that swing simulator or the, using the axe or using the choked up bat, the reason we choke up in the bat is because it's a lot more control. Absolutely. But anyway, if you go point A, point B. Point A, you're back here, your body's closed. Point B, you're open. The body's open facing the pitcher. The hands are out front. They've, they've rotated around here, and you've x snapped. That's hitting the ball to center field, and that's your new point B. You know, point A is at the start. Point B is here, and that's a really easy thing to do, and it makes sense to me. How about yep. you? It does. I, I think you have to, you're, you're really all the way back to point A, and then as you come in, to the point B in the snap. I mean, it's just a very big focus. It makes a big difference in how you're hitting When you ball. pull your hands back all the way, go back to that again. You pull your hands back all the way, you feel that left lap Absolutely. tight, then you're connected. That nice tight feeling you get in your laps. But when, when you work on it, you and I were working on the simulator, the, the perfect snap in a chair, and we found ourselves doing it wrong, you know? Sometimes, Absolutely. too, it's funny. You have to watch yourself. You rotate and the guy snaps around here. Well, you'd be hitting that ball over the fence foul, you know, to the side. You got to make sure that if you're going to to center field that you rotate, uh, do the sequence of rotation, extension, and snap right to there, right to the point of impact. Absolutely. I think that's, it takes a lot of work to do that, but you have to practice that and you have to drill that. And I would even recommend doing what? How many a day would you recommend just sitting there practicing? You know, the swing simulator, if you have it set up, that, you know, you, can, you know, just sit down and do a set of 10, you know, do two sets of 10 three times a day. I mean, it's a real easy thing to do if you don't have one and you're watching TV, get it choked up bad, right. or we were using a little roller, anything that you can just sit in, in your chair. And again, the key is to have your hips already open so they're out of the equation. Absolutely. But your upper body, you can torque back, and then you can rotate, you can uh, pull and extend, and then axe snap, rotational pull axe snap. Right. It's a mouthful. It is a mouthful. It's, it's very important to work on that pull. I think that as you're working that snap, that pull is, becomes more more dominant and a strong feeling and it makes it improves your swing significantly so be sure and focus on that as well. And I think Steve, you know, you, it's done in one motion, it's done Absolutely. in a 30 of a second, but the sequence has to be proper. You have to start off by saying my main focus is going to be feeling that rotation, but then you're feeling the rotation, pull the connect the lead arm, and then you then as you start to X snap, which comes a split second later, you'll get extension out of the X snap there. You know, yep. you'll you'll get that extension of the of the tricep and of the arm coming off the chest. Now, the pros will say, Jeff Hall in particular, so I say, hey, it's all lead arm. You know, the top arm is along for the ride. Well, that's more of a focus because we know that the top arm is very important to swing. If we have the rotational pull X snap, and most of the focus is on the lead arm initially, where do you find the top hand? comes into play for your swing? I think it comes right at the snap. Right at the very end. Right at the very snap at the very end. So the one thing when you monitor this with lesson guys or our own swings, you have to monitor all three of those things. And I've seen guys sit there and, they, and I've watched them even do it. They're like this over and over, you know. I go, oh good, they're, they're, rolling, they're rolling over bad before, okay. So all of a sudden I see them doing this. And I say, what, do you, what, do you, what, do you, what am I doing wrong? They say, nothing. Well, you tell me what am I doing wrong. You're not opening your shoulder. There's, There's no, no rotation. rotation. There's no, no rotation. rotation. You know, if you say rotate. So, I mean, you monitor. It's got to be rotation. Rotation has to pull it. Otherwise, you'll be swinging That's down. Right. But still, if you can eliminate the roll, if you can stay into an axe snap, you'll still have a much square strike in the ball. Absolutely. I think that's an extremely important part of that because when you do not do the rollover, that's what you're trying to do is to have a very good impact straight into the ball, hitting it on the sweet part of the bat. And ultimately, how do you fix it? You sit down and you drill it. Drill it. Every day. Drill it. Write the basics. Drill on this. It's just a perfect way to, to, to make sure you're getting back your swing. It's